It's so interesting with a band such as Diablo Swing Orchestra, I keep thinking that they have more albums than they do, but maybe it's just because each year I go through and like listen to their discography uh, that I think they have more albums than they really do. But anyway, let's listen to a new one. Swagger and Stroll Down the Rabbit Hole by Diablo Swing Orchestra. So Diablo Swing Orchestra is actually a Swedish conglomeration of a band. Like, it's so weird to kind of put Diablo Swing Orchestra in a genre. The best I can say is that they're metal ish <laughs> really they're a blending of like the big band mythos of the 20s to like 50s so you've got like iterations of swing of jazz of like that big band essence but using the expression of metal of hard rock of uh, avant-garde almost uh, rock in opposition uh, they got their big start back in the early 2000s with the butcher's ballroom uh, that for me the song that just exploded for me was the balrog boogie and then very soon after that the sing-along songs for the damned and dangerous uh, that I still love. Like, A Tap Dancer's Dilemma is just a delight. Through the years, I mean, they put out Pandora's Piñata in 2012, which was fine. Um, they came back swinging hard with Pasta Fisticuffs back in 2017. They actually lost their um, main singer of Anne Louise, um, who really went to pursue her um, opera singing because that was one of the main tenets of uh, Diablo Swing Orchestra up to that point. They had this brilliant singer of Anne Louise uh, providing an opera approach. Now, they did have Kristen Evengard uh, to replace her, and she's been pretty good. Like, her work on Past of Fisticuffs was very good. It's different, for sure. It's a little bit more of a peppy, fun, um, almost like girl rock essence on it, and a lot less in terms of the operatic, uh, very opera, high note kind of uh, a grabber. Uh, but the energy is, that I think Kristen brings to the band is just uh, uh, outstanding. So now we come to their latest album of Swagger and Stroll Down the Rabbit Hole. And this is quite a treat. You know, it's 13 tracks over about an hour's worth of music. And for any other band, or at least for a lot of other bands, an hour's worth of music could feel daunting. It could become overblown. It could become redundant or retreading the same ground. But here, I feel like each track is very fresh, very new. The biggest gripe about this album that I want to get out of the way immediately is the mixing. The mixing of this album muddles a lot of the dynamics that Diablo Swing Orchestra used to command because of how much is going on with this band. They have a massive string section with violins and cellos. Uh, they have an amazing array of soundscapes with synthesizers. And I feel like a lot of that is lost within this mixing because it almost feels like a mixing that was done back in like the early 2000s with that loudness wars you know the casualties that was rush's vapor trails or metallica's death magnetic where these brilliant and beautiful albums were so muddled by everything being elevated to 11. So I feel like that's the biggest weakness of this album. And unfortunately, it did decrease my enjoyment over all of this album because of so much of the dynamics that is being lost within it. So I wanted to get that out of the way so that I can at least gush about everything else that I love about this album. The album opens up with Sightseeing in the Apocalypse, which does a brilliant job of opening up this album. It's a very get up and go, call to arms, march. And it's so interesting because Kristen doesn't even really make an appearance on this first track. It's really just Daniel Harkinson. Uh, I think I got that one. Uh, one of the lead guitarists and uh, vocalists on this album. His presence on this album is very felt uh, in a very positive way. And then the second 
track of War Painted Valentine just opens up with an explosion. You know, it opens up with this fast paced rhythm guitar that's being overlaid with these violins and synths that just bleed with brilliance. Uh, and I love that the rhythm section, once we get over the main intro, has this almost rubber chicken sound to it, like this. Uh, and it works. Like, that's the weirdest part about this is that it works so very well. And I, I am immediately drawn into this track. And it's got this like overlay of metal that just is so infectious. Like it's metal without being grating because like this kind of <sighs> like avant-garde, very strange metal can get a little strange and style over substance. But I feel like Diablo Swing Orchestra has been doing this for so long that it becomes second nature and it folds in very, very well. So the third track, and I'm going to try this. Oh boy, here we go. Uh, Celebremos lo inventabilo. I think that it is that it is that it is. Uh, it's all in Spanish, which I think is really good because it adds to the overall like almost calypso feel towards it. Like it feels very Spanish, you know. It almost has like this ebb and flow of a calypso kind of a feel. Uh, and I love this new style that the band is experimenting with. Uh, and with other any other band or a lot of other bands that would try these different styles in so closely packed together could have made it sound so washed together and overlaid. I feel like with DSO, they do it very well so that it feels very seamless. Then we come into Speed Dating an Arsonist, and man, I love this track. I love the drive, I love the flow of this track. Like it's very, it's channeling that 1930s swing. Uh, you know, it almost wants you to get up and do like the jive kind of a dance. Uh, it wants you to grab like a partner and just like twirl them around the, the dance floor. Um, and it's, again, it's infectious. It's very catchy. I find myself singing along to it, even with the subject material being quite dark, you know? And I just, I love that. and. Continuing that dance style, we come into Jig of the Century that almost has like this Celtic vibe to it, you know? Like we've had three completely different styles in three across three tracks that blend and flow seamlessly together. So when we come into the sixth track, you're not really even know what you're going to expect, you know? Like it's, it's keeping you guessing. It's always like demanding your attention. So the sound of an unconditional surrender has this driving force, but it's song it's slower. Um, it kind of keeps that Celtic mist going on. Like I'm thinking of looking out into a mist swept moor or over a sea coast as the sun is coming up uh, and things are just starting to make themselves known. And I love the build of this track. I love how this track really builds itself up. And I mean, we're coming into the halfway point of this album. And so it's good to have something that just kind of like levels the playing field a little bit because like all the tracks up to this point have just been cranked up the energy up to 11. And so you need a little bit of time just to kind of like uh, take stock and take a breath. So when we come into the seventh track of Malign uh, Monologues, I love that this is more of a, like a traditional DSO track. You know, it's got that groove. It's got that that 30 swing uh, towards it. Uh, it's got that bounce that I love. And I love the buildup and the play out by the midpoint of this track. I'm loving how the strings come into the fold after all the horn works that we've had on there. And it really paints a beautiful picture. And it also proves that DSO doesn't need to be, you know, at 11 the entire time to create an infectious, very addictive track, which allows the eighth track of Out Came the Hummingbirds to just sweep you off your feet. Like that takes the rhythm and again, makes it huge. And this one almost has like flavors of techno. Like I'm getting a, almost like a Tron soundtrack approach to this. Uh, I'm loving this newer sound that's uh, bringing it out. Like it almost, it's probably the first time that I've heard a more futuristic sound being applied to DSO rather than more of like a traditional sound. It has like this very EDM feel to it. It almost has, uh, especially near the end point, almost like this dubstep feel to it. So in one case it is very futuristic, but the other case they're also using a little bit of an outdated. So we come into the ninth track of Snake Oil Baptism and it's one of the more weaker tracks. Like it's still very infectious. I love the drive. I love the get up and go aspects to it. The horns that permeate are very, very well done. Uh, but I do feel like it's more of a traditional rock track. They're not really 
elevating the music all that much. Like they're not really doing too much with this track. It's still very like infectious, very bubbly, very happy in that sense. But I don't know, like it feels something that like Queens of the Stone Age would do if they had overloaded on sugar. So when we come into the 10th track, I'm looking for something new, and they provide with Les Invisibles. Uh, I think that it's, it's French. <laughs> uh, but I'm loving how haunting everything is. Like, Kirsten's vocals on this, she's channeling some kind of a seance, right? Because I'm feeling these spirits weaving and intertwining. I'm loving the harmonized scenes that she's doing uh, on this track. It's a little bit more somber, but I also love how this track builds itself up by the end, and we get those horn works again. And then we come into Salute the Reckoning, which almost has like a 1960s go-go surfer feel towards it, you know, like it almost feels like the beginning of the Munsters a little bit as well. Uh, it's so weird how DSO is just like channeling all these different styles of music while still having this overlay feel uh, and flavor of DSO. It's Oh man, I love saluting the reckoning. It's so fun. It's so weird and strange. And then we come into the twelfth track, second last track of the Prima Donna Gauntlet, and it has so many different flavors on this. Like it almost starts off with like a very Mediterranean or even like Indian flair towards it. Uh, I'm getting like overlays of like sitars, but then it does open up into this very meaty metal approach to it. So I love the evolution of this track. I mean, it feels like a journey all in itself at being about five minutes long and I'm loving like the ebb and flow of like this almost like the snake moving and maneuvering around this environment that has so many different scents and flavors to it. It goes right from these very really chuggy medley guitars to the soundscaping brilliant uh, orchestration of violins and I'm really loving Daniel's vocal works on here. Like Daniel's vocals are soaring and then the album finishes off with Overture to a Ceasefire and again we have so many different flavors on this. I love how this track opens up somberly, very hauntingly channeling that uh, saluting the reckoning or Malayne monologues, uh, but bringing it into this darker approach. Like there's a lot of shadows going on in this track. Nobody, nobody really knows if they're safe or not in this one. And I love how, again, it goes back to that first track of Sightseeing the Apocalypse where it's a little bit of a marching drive on this. It's a call to arms, a call to action. Uh, and I love that this kind of bookmarks the, the album and it does a very good job of turning everything around and ending everything off in a very, very well placed and well done manner. That's the album. I had a blast with this album, even though the mixing and mastering of this album was probably the weakest point. It really goes to show how brilliant DSO is on being able to handle all these different genres and all these different styles across time and still feel like it's a cohesive whole. It's not just a random mixed grab bag of some tracks are good, some tracks are not. All the tracks on here are stellar. And if it wasn't for the fact that this album has a muddled mix. I would have said I love this album with my whole heart, but unfortunately because of that, it does bring down my enjoyment slightly enough to say that Swagger and Stroll Down the Rabbit Hole by Diablo Swing Orchestra is one that I will definitely pick up in physical format. Like it's one that I will definitely go out and find. I think it's probably one of their stronger albums, especially in this stage of their careers. I don't know if it's quite up to par with The Bachelor, with The Butcher's Ballroom, but it's definitely one that I will revisit quite often because of the different styles that is found within it. So this one gets the note seal of approval. It gets my recommendation. Not quite a run, don't walk to listen to it, but I would highly recommend going out and listening to this. So, yeah, that's what I've got. What do you guys think of Swagger and Stroll Down the Rabbit Hole by Diablo Swing Orchestra? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Whatever you thought, let, let me know by commenting down below. And thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.